to welcome you wonderful three professors. Thank you for taking the time uh, to come here. This is our third workshop um, of the semester. And uh, just to clarify, did everyone get a copy of the research article to the invite um, that I provided for this workshop? Mm -hmm. It's okay if you haven't looked at it or, or looked through it. There's only some key elements that I wanted to go through uh, about this research paper with you all uh, today. Um, this uh, was a, actually a study conducted by the University of Illinois in Chicago, and they wanted to see, and I think this is a great precursor to our conversation, but they wanted to see what were faculty using within the learning management system. Uh, lucky for us, within this study, this university uh, utilizes Blackboard, so pretty much the functionality elements are identical to what we have available uh, at, at our university. Uh, some of the key interesting facts I'd like to kind of share with you all uh, is that uh, Educause, which is kind of the backdrop organization behind a lot of online learning and different innovations happening in higher ed, uh, conducted a study and realized that one in three or one in five institutions are preparing to replace their LMS system in the next three years. Uh, lucky for us, we're, we're not on that trajectory, at least just yet, but just kind of keeping in mind that the learning management system is something that might be here to stay and that might always be evolving. Right from, from what our understanding is today, it might be different three years from now. So just to keep that in mind, uh, maybe some of the things that we go over today might be irrelevant in three years. Uh, just kind of <laughs> uh, talk about that. And I, I, I think one of the most interesting aspects of this article was uh, the results from their sample. Overwhelmingly, uh, professors use the learning management system as a content item area. Uh, to house content, whether it's, it's articles, case studies, uh, videos, it, a vast majority of the usage is for content. And the great thing about this study is that it takes into consideration face-to-face, -face, online, and hybrid classes. So it's not just online, uh, it's, it's all classes that utilize the learning management system. And again, over at least within their institution, 97% was how much usage was just within the content area. And, and second place is the grade center, uh, which, you know, for obvious reasons, uh, students attend your classes to ultimately get a, get a grade, hopefully a good one. Uh, and then the third highest element was announcements. And so I, I do want to hit a little bit of the content area, at least in my portion, as well as the uh, announcements area. So show, showcasing a little bit of what announcements can do, if you're not familiar, as well as showcasing a little bit of the content area <coughs> A development that you can utilize yourself. I need a hand with a little bit of a preliminary issue. Yes. When I want to get onto uh, Google Chrome, it's making me enter a password, which I usually don't do. And usually I go right to Chrome and then just do, you know, go to Blackboard at Blackboard at our site. So just no thanks. <laughs> in other words, I don't usually sign into Chrome. I just go to Google and just go That's true. Yeah. That's true, yeah. So, I didn't have to sign in. Yeah, I didn't. And then, you know, I got in the first time. I entered, logged in, and it said, you've tried too many times. And that was my first time. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been someone using that computer before you. That's oh, right. Yeah, because I know some other of our uh, IEP faculty come in here to, oh, to utilize. Oh, okay. that, so that, that might have been the case. So okay. just a, a raise a hand. Uh, are, is everyone here pretty familiar with announcements, creating announcements, mm -hmm. posting announcements? Um, I, I won't bother you too much with uh, some of the uh, uh, details of creating announcements, but I, I, I definitely suggest you doing this. You know, continue to post announcements is a great way to uh, reach out to your students, let them know where where they should be at in your course, uh, the progress that they should be making. Maybe there's an assignment due. I do want to talk about one functionality with announcements that you might not be aware of. I have a question. I, yeah. I tend to tend to use. I started using announcements, but just send emails, like you know, to the entire group. What is the difference? I mean, it's the same thing. It's the announcement kind of stays on the. And really, that's the difference. Is that if they ultimately wanted to review what you had they posted, they don't need to look into their emails. They don't need to look through their emails to kind of look through it. They can have it within their course. Hello, welcome. Yes. I have a question. You can't put an attachment in an announcement, though, right? 
I can't. Okay. So I don't know how to do that. I th oh, it's there. Oh, because you, you know how normally Blackboard has like a box yeah. 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 for attachments? So there, I just do it through that? Yeah, and it'll, it'll show up within this text box. So un, uh, it's not like the other content items where you attach and it's sort of like just a link within. Right, like, like it looks different than it does. Yeah, it will look oh, different okay. if you attach a file on an announcement. So okay. let's see if there's something I can write. Okay, on. perfect. Like computer Ancient Egypt. Are you sure? Okay. Submit it just to get a little breath of what it would probably look like. So it would it would it would be like a link. Oh, but and but you can still do the attachment though. Yeah, it's an attachment, right? When you when students click on it, they'll they, they should be prompted to. After you hit submit, it come up on the announcements page and they get downloaded. Yeah, so let me. And about the earlier question about announcements versus email, I like announcements because. You can email the announcement, so you get two in one. Yeah. Because you just click that box to email it, and then you're getting an email, but then you're also getting it posted on your homepage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you don't do that, it's just how do they know? How do students know that they're, they just get a notification through? Uh, sometimes they get a notification. I, I would say most of the time, uh, a notification that the professor had posted an announcement. So, but but just but you to, have to just click that just to just yeah just that as a, to make sure that they do get that. Yeah. Uh, and I also wanted to mention, because sometimes I know you as the professor, you want to post an announcement to remind students of an assignment. Mm -hmm. You can actually, using this course link option right here, you can browse through your course and link an assignment directly um, so that the students can just go to the announcement and turn it. So let's say module four discussion, I want to I want to kind of post for students. Okay. I'm just going to write test. An announcement, and I want um, my message in the announcement is about that discussion board and reminding them it's due uh, to turn it in. And I'm going to provide a course link for them in the announcement so that it's there for them. And as you can see, uh, the attachment that we had attached previously is a link here, and it downloads Download. just by clicking on it. Uh, and then the course link below automatically takes them to the discussion board forum. So just, just as a FYI, this could be a good option for you if you're posting an announcement to remind them of an assignment. It might be good to go ahead and link that assignment uh, to that announcement. And since in this study, this, uh, you know, the main area that was utilized by professors is content, I kind of wanted to go over your content options here that you have available within Blackboard. I, and just kind of give me a raise of hand. Is everyone here kind of familiar with how to create an item? Uh, mm -hmm. you know, a file, if you're, if you're trying to attach a file. Uh, you got audio links. Image, you could just have one image if you just want to link an image. Web link, if you want to li link to websites uh, you know, that are relevant to your particular subject matter. Learning modules and lesson plans, we don't recommend it. Just the way we have our courses set up. You don't really need to worry too much about that syllabus. Um, obviously, don't need to worry about it. Um, but there are some additional mashups. You know, if you if you have a YouTube video, utilize the mashup. Find, find the YouTube video through this application within Blackboard. So that way it's embedded into your course. Is there anything in particular, I do want to kind of pose this question to you, is there any in particular within the content items that you would like me to go over. Can you track what students have viewed your content item or just the numbers of views? Like fantastic question. You can you so you can view the number of people who have viewed that item. You can you can uh, add that element to it. Mm -hmm. It's right here track right. number of views. But to answer the question if you wanted to know specifically who, which student has looked at that content. Right. Um, there's, there's kind of a, a back way to that, and, and that's utilizing, and this, honestly, this is a, a session in and of itself, and I will host a session just on evaluation of Blackboard, okay. but you would be able to do so by doing course reports. Uh, okay. Um, and, and you can do a course activity overview, all user activity inside content areas, and you can, and there's different options here as far as 
If you want to know how active a student was in a group, you can find that out. You can run a report that way. Um, you, in the forums, in the discussion forums, how active a particular user was. Okay. A student overview for single cores. And it kind of just explores area. I definitely promise you that I'm going to host a session on just course reports because there's a lot of cool stuff in here that I think is worth talk, uh, talking about. Okay. Um, so yes, you could do that, but it, it, it's a process to kind of find out specifically if a student had looked at something. Uh, and of course, I kind of want to talk about, before I give it off to my colleagues here, a little bit about uh, some test options, some question types that you have available. Just because I, when we, when we utilize a lot of different tests and I observe a lot of different tests that are in courses, I don't personally advocate for assessments, traditional ABC style assessments, but if you need them and if you like the automation, I still think there's some pretty cool test question types that you can utilize that can really make it a little bit more inter interesting. So let me create a test from scratch here. Test two. And of course you can write a description as well as instructions right here as you're building a test. But if you're doing it manually, right, if you're not just creating your test on Word, or maybe you're, you, you have your test on Word on one side of your computer and, and you're creating a test uh, within the LMS on the other side, there's just some interesting question types that you can select. And I, I want to talk about hotspot. I know not everyone is teaching geography or things of that nature, but I think utilizing a hotspot question type can be pretty powerful. I, I did it for a religion course, or no, no, it was a geography course, my apologies, and it was, uh, it was, it was actually an African politics course, and he wanted students, because he knew that they didn't really understand the continent of Africa and really understand the makeup, so in order to kind of scaffold their understanding of uh, politics in Africa, he wanted them to do some map quizzes uh, to acquaint themselves with the geography, with the cultures, uh, things of that nature. And he utilized a hotspot image of just a blank map of Africa, and students were able to click. So instead of just ABC uh, question types, students were able to click on what they thought, um, you know, uh, uh, where, where Nigeria is, or where Cameroon is. And, and they had to select where those particular countries were. Um, so I think that's a very powerful uh, question type. Uh, and of course, you have your other traditional ones, uh, your matching, your ordering, true or false. Uh, but if you're in a math, I, I don't know if we have any math teachers here. I, I, I don't think we do. But if you were a math teacher or you did want to talk about formulas uh, or anything mathematical, uh, there, is, there is an actual question type that allows students to have these different formula options to answer the questions. And interestingly, enough, interestingly enough, it also offers an uh, answer range. Because I know sometimes in math class, the right answer isn't exactly you know, one number. It could be a variable of numbers. Um, so you have that option to do that here. So that's assessments. But I, I think a vast majority of the professors here probably use assignments. And probably use some format of essays or you know, those types of responses as, as, as what you're grading in your course. So to kind of go over how to create an assignment, uh, pretty straightforward, you click on assignment, you can name this assignment whatever you like, right below you have the instruction text box, and like Michelle had addressed earlier, this is where you do find the attachment, uh, the assignment files that you can attach directly, in, in, and you could do this with other items and things of that nature. Um, if you want to attach a description or something that goes along with the assignment, you can do so here. The due dates, if you want to put due date, highly recommend that. Um, points possible. You can add a rubric if you want to make your life easier. I definitely suggest we can help you create rubrics for your assignments um, to kind of automate that process. Of course, individual, group, now, if you select group, you actually have to either let the system automatically put people into groups or manually put students into groups. You can't really assign a group assignment without having groups set in Blackboard. This is where you can do the single attempt, multiple attempts, unlimited attempts. 
And really what the reason that I'm talking about assignments is, if you're not familiar with Safe Assign, I really want to recommend that uh, you go ahead and activate it. I mean, it's right there. It's, 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 you know, it's available if you want to check for plagiarism for your essay. I see a head nodding. Yes. I have, I have, I have a question and a comment about Safe Assign. Please share. Please, um, we, Danielle and I, we're from the writing composition program. And I promise you that Safe Assign is not the best way to mm -hmm. check for plagiarism. I had a student who plagiarized. I had printouts of whole paragraphs that I found on a Google search. And his paper came up clean on the Safe Assign. So just as a heads up, if you're using that, yeah. um, not, not the solve all, cure all of, no. for plagiarism. So just a heads up, it can come up clean and still be a plagiarized document. Uh, absolutely. And I, I don't think. I just see you know, Yeah, there's no. <laughs> well, I, I, the point out. Yeah, I think with. Um, um, it is good to know that I think with these these uh, systems, these automated systems, really tough to capture everything, uh, you know, or anything. I, you know, I don't really understand. I mean, we're talking blocks, entire blocks yeah. of, 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 of articles that were readily available online and the paper came back clean. And have, have you had experience with Turnitin as well? Um, I have not used Turnitin, but um, with SafeAssign, um, I'm, I'm the associate director of the program, yeah. so I have to deal with these cases sometimes yeah, absolutely. Um, before they move up to, to Honor Council, for example. And um, there was a student who was, I mean, basically saying I did not cheat. So I mean, I ended up kind of looking into it before and whole paragraphs, yeah. entire sections that, yeah, it's okay. but we, I mean, through Safe Assign comes up clean. So just, just as a heads up. It's, um, yes, yeah, <laughs> it's not a cure-all. It might be good to have it there, and just so students are aware, sometimes just the knowledge that they know they're, they're getting checked, checked. They're getting yeah. checked can keep them from actually uh, conducting that. Um, I definitely would love to see if maybe turn it in might be a solution yeah. to I activate could, that. I and run that paper through and see what happens. I, I think I still have it. So. That, that, I think that would be okay. a wonderful test. I can do that. Uh, we'll see if it comes up. And just so we we have that yeah. knowledge, too, to, so that we're, we're not sharing bad information. Um, so just I don't think it's bad information. I just, just want to give a heads up that it's just like it's not complete. It's not complete, and that's that's good to know because um, I wasn't aware of that. So I, I appreciate you sharing that. And I have a question yes. actually about assignments. So one of the limitations that I have um, when I'm when I'm creating assignments for my courses um, with assignments. Um, so sorry, I'm just going to go back to assignments. When you're creating an assignment under assessment, so it comes up in your in your grade book, mm -hmm. um, the options are test, survey, assignment. And the problem that, that I have, uh, and I don't know if this is consistent across the other departments, but not all my assignments are at the same level. So I have some that are just minor assignments, like scaffolding assignments, low stakes. Mm -hmm. They're still assignments, and it won't. And then when you're trying to kind of add percentages to, to it, as far as the grade book is concerned, there's no way to kind of, you know, you have a test. So if I have like a really major assignment, I, set yeah. it, I try to set it up as a test, but then it's, it wants me to create a test, and it's not. It's still yeah. an assignment. It's just a major assignment versus minor assignments. Is there a workaround with that rather than me trying to do all this manual kind of, you know, adjustment of percentages? and? Yeah, you know, uh, and, and Ron's going to go a little bit more in depth into okay. the Grade Center, but I will say that there is an ability to create your own categories within Blackboard. So you, you're not limited to having everything in a test bucket or a survey bucket or assignment bucket. Okay. You, can, you can kind of create your own buckets. And then from there, yeah, because you're creating new categories, so let's say for your example, we have uh, uh, you know, uh, large assignments, medium assignments, and small assignments, just to keep it simple, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if I want to change the percentage, you can create your custom uh, categories to kind of fit that mold. And then from there, that's where you manipulate the percentage-wise within the total columns to okay. say small assignments are only worth 10%, uh, medium okay. assignments are worth, okay. you know, 40 and, and, and vice versa. Okay. Okay. versus. So there, there is that path. So I'll wait. Absolutely. And, and we might not cover it. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't have info on it, but I know where he's going and where you're leading on to with uh, okay. that question. Okay. And there definitely is a way, because I'll have to look into it further and we can send out an email about it. Sure. I've, done, I've dealt with Rick when we've done like, Three easy categories, like you were saying, you know, like mm -hmm. a simple, a medium, and a hard, right. and it's gonna be like 30, 30, and 40. You know, that we can, there's a way to separate the column out to make that one specific assignment worth more. I'll have to look into it further because I haven't done it, 
Okay. But there is yeah. a way to do it. And I, I, we'll find out. Yeah, and I have, I've actually done it. So if you want to just quickly, I'm just going to show you how to get to an area to explore that possibility, and then mm -hmm. we can go in depth after the session to kind of show you how to. So you would actually just go to a great, full grade center uh, right here uh, underneath your course management. Mm -hmm. uh, click under manage, mm -hmm. and then uh, you know click on categories. And then that, uh, you see here, you see this option to create categories. Oh, okay. And, and you can do so there. So just kind of, that's the area to explore for, for that particular Perfect. opportunity. Perfect. I think I can figure it out from there. I've seen that over there. Awesome. Excellent. Thank you. And you so, do all your courses weighted grades? Is that how Because you, um, you're weighting your grades if you're doing that, correct? Yes. So okay. they're ready. So okay, because you know how they have that option to like move it across? Mm -hmm. I think that's what we need to explore as well with that. So I'll look into it further. It's, well. a, it's a great question. Great yeah, question. Yeah, and it it is man, okay, if I still get stuck, um, I'll, I'll Definitely. Think about oh, that. Yeah, of course you can reach out. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. So it just it kind of wanted to showcase ass assessments. We looked at assignments. We looked at some of the content areas. Um, and again, this is what's typically used. And we want to start thinking outside of that box, right, and helping you get there of what else can the learning management system do. Um, with that said, I, I also know the Great Center is a, a, a huge part of what you need as a faculty member and, you know, on a consistent basis with this online course. So uh, with that, I'm going to give it to Ron to sort of talk about some of the common problems that we get from professors regarding the Great Center, and, and hopefully that addresses a, a few of your concerns. Well, like Luis was saying, I'm definitely going to cover a couple of the main things that we get as far as like requests for the Great Center. Uh, just like the professor stated, I'm glad that we're bringing this up because it does jog your mind and now we're getting a good question like you were saying, like how can I make a percentage better? So hopefully this conversation will maybe bring up other ideas that we can further explore. And if we don't have the answer now, we will get it out to you. Uh, I was just going to go over a couple of the main common things that I usually get. So when we go to our full grade center, one of the main things that I usually get is I have a student, you know, had some issues throughout the semester, and we want to go ahead, and she felt that, you know, she got a 10%. We're using Samantha Gonzalez here as an example. She got a 10 on module one on her discussion, but, you know, she was having some trouble. She wants to be able to redo it. And one of the ways we can do it is we always have the ability to wipe out the grade. And all of you as professors have that ability. And if you're not familiar with it, I mean, that's what I was going to go over because I do get a lot of requests of how can I get rid of that uh, grade they want to be able to uh, be able to retake it. Uh, you would click on the drop-down menu right next to it and just go straight down to it says view grade details. And it has, you know, the current grade. They got 10 points out of 20. And you have the ability to edit the grade, clear the grade, you know, and ignore the attempt. And you can do those right here on this window. I'm not going to do it. This is a previous course from the spring, so I'm kind of using an example because the grade book's completely filled out. But it's literally just right in a drop down menu, and you would be able to just hit submit. I'm just going to go back to the grade center. Uh, another thing that I want to speak about is let me see if I go down the line here. I'll use, I'll use a quiz as an example, and Samantha Gonzalez is going to be our example again. Um, she was having some issues. She felt she could have done better. She did some extra credit work that you've been speaking with her one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you know, she got 10 points, but, you know, you feel that like she deserved 12. You want to give her those two points. Uh, instead of having her go back, she doesn't have to retake the test, you can actually click on her grade right there, and, you know, we can change it to 12 if we want to right on the spot, and you have that ability. Uh, you know, two different circumstances. One, if they want to retake the test, you can just clear the attempt. Versus, you're going to give them a couple additional points for maybe they did an extra assignment or something, or you felt that they earned a couple extra points towards the end. A lot of professors come to me right at the end of the semester, right before grades are due on Kingling, and they're like, "I need to add a couple points so the person you did, you know, bump up to a B or whatever the scenario may be." Uh, you can manually just go right in. Just it's one of the easiest ones to do because you just literally hover over and just click on the grade and you're able to change it. Um, another thing that I want to go over with you on the Great Center is, um, as you know, with the Great Center set up, you know, going down the columns, you have all your students that you're able to view their name, first name, last name, and then the bar here will scroll across and it'll have 
uh, all the assignments, quizzes, discussions as the semester goes on. Sometimes you'll have a course that was copied over from a master shell or an, edit, an extra assignment was added throughout the semester that you felt was important that you want to use. So now your grade center is a little out of whack because it's going to go in towards the end. So one of the ways that you do organize your columns and so everything follows like module one quiz, module two quiz, and so on, is you would just go down right at the grade center and you would go down to manage, scroll down to column organization. And basically what this does is right here has all the assignments. So for example, if like module two was in the wrong spot, you could just literally hover over and you can move it up to right here. You would hit submit and then when you go back, I'm gonna hit cancel just, but that was just the example to show you. It would show up here right on your column, on the screen on the full grade center, back into the order that uh, you would want it to. It makes it easier for you, and it makes it easier for the students because the students are able to see their grade center and they'll be able to scroll across and see like, okay, this is what I got in module one, this is what I got in module two, and so on. But it also makes it a lot easier for you because as you're grading, you don't want to be, and if you, know, if you have 15, 20 students, it can get a little daunting because you'll want to be able to have the ability to just go down the line, have, make sure that your gradebook is in order. So it's a lot easier to just go in, look what assignment you need to either, you know, wipe out the attempt, give them an extra credit if they want, and it makes <coughs> your gradebook a lot more organized. Um, with those three items up there, is there anything else that stands out to you guys in the gradebook that you have issues with, that you encounter throughout the semester? Or mostly, have I always get questions at the end of the semester because that's when grades are due. And I know you're under a time type with the like, you gotta get into the registrar's office, so. Uh, and that's unfortunate when, when problems occur. So we wanna help you with that, so as we are just asking out there, is there anything that stands out besides your good question? <laughs> um, I just, I mean, this is not, it's not a huge deal, but is mm -hmm. there a way to set the default so it's not just 10 students that are displayed? Um, most of our classes are capped at, I mean, even the online classes are capped at 25. Right. You're saying cap for so, the amount of students involved? So here, involved? like, sure. right. So if you have more than 10 students, you can only see your first 10 students. So every time I go in, I always have more than 10 students. So I always have to edit rows display um, so I can see my whole class. Down there in the right hand column, yeah. you can Edit rows display? Yeah. You can edit that? So yeah. yeah, and then you can say, I usually put, you know, like 30, and then it shows your whole class. I don't know to do that. But you have to go in and do that every time? But I have to do that every time. Oh, exactly. So is it possible okay. to set the default? Because if not, then you have the other column, then you have the other little bar. But I don't, sorry, my text. I see what you're saying. No, that's then a, you have the other little question. bar to kind of scroll up and down. Rather Wait, than where just do you edit it? Just right there, see where it says edit uh, rows display. Edit rows display. You know what? You bring up your second good question. Is that something we'll have to look at? Well, <laughs> we we've never had. That's why we like to have these workshops. Yeah. We want to hear what issues are you encountering. I mean, it's not a big we'll bring some things to the table, but we want to hear your feedback. Let's, let's explore. Can, can mm -hmm. we click on filter uh, up top? Sure. See what that goes show through. filter. So all status, all category, show attempts. No, okay, so that's that's not good. What about manage? Go back to manage to see if we got some areas here. Okay, so we know column organization. Yeah. Row visibility. Row visibility. Maybe let's click on that. Maybe it gives us more robust mm -hmm. options. Mm -hmm. It's okay. just like hiding or showing. So maybe if there's an unavailable student that you know is That's what I was thinking. Like, what if we, if we were to click on them and then like show rows? Right, but that's more of hide. If you don't want, to, like, if I don't want to see my DC, like, if I don't want to see you guys on my roll, which, yeah. You know, <laughs> oh, okay, I see what you're saying. I could hide. Yeah, because DCA we always show up, of course. Yeah, so let's cancel that. Let's get out of there. Go back to manage. Let's see. Hmm. Smart views. Uh, I don't think that would stand out. Hmm. That is a good question. Is that yeah. Like we said, we bring, we bring some stuff to the table here at these. Um, meetings and workshops, but we also like to hear your feedback, and this is these are the things that we're getting. Yeah, because we wouldn't look into that. We would never look into that, right? not knowing you. Like, that's so, an issue that we would never look into, but we're I mean, glad it's to hear not, that. It, it's just tedious that every time I go into my gradebook, I have oh, exactly. to, so to be able to see my whole class, and then when I'm going across, or even if, if I'm manually inputting something because I collected, they didn't submit electronically, I'm just going in and submitting the grades. 
Um, no, and we're glad to hear that because, like, as professors, that's what you're encountering. Right. And we want to be able to hear that. So if there's something we could do in our end to get that, so you know, resolved or, suge or make a yeah. suggestion, you know, that's what we're here for. So I bring up little small things that sometimes you guys come with me. Can you override a grade? Can you clear an attempt? Can you organize my grade book? Right. So putting that out there to you and you giving me feedback, that's great because now we're looking at like, okay, they're looking at they're having these issues as well. So we'll definitely look into those and get so back to you. So it could just be like a default for all classes yeah. maybe. I mean, I don't think you want to see more than, say, 25. No. I think that would be a okay. good, and if all classes are capped at, all the online courses especially are capped at 25. They're capped, yeah, they're capped at 25. To kind of say, okay, the default is 25 rather than 10 yeah. across all platforms. And just keep it that way. That would be. No, that would be a great It's a great question. We're definitely going to explore yeah. it. We're going to explore that as well. Thank you. Again, it's not, it's not a big deal. No, no, no. But, but just, we like to hear this. That's what these workshops are for. It's, just, yeah. it's great yeah. communication because you guys are seeing things on your end that we wouldn't explore. Mm -hmm. You know, we're building courses and we're adding content, but we're not grading. We're not looking into, you know, do I need to see all my students' grades? You know, when I see a course, I just see your master show mm -hmm. and your name and my name in there with DCIE. That's it. So I would never think of that. So it's, it's a great point so that you brought up. <laughs> yeah, we're the DCIE one. You always see us in there. <laughs> it's funny, we're teaching assistant when we show up, if you noticed them. <laughs> good questions, though. Uh, with that being said, those are the items I was going to cover. Ariella's got some really good stuff with the blogs, wikis, journals, journals, journals entries. So, Which, yeah. which uh, just to reference the article again, was the least utilized part of the learning management system. Yep. It was like 4%. No one uses uh, blogs and journals at all. At least within this institution, I venture to say probably any institution. I use them. So that's fantastic. In all of my classes. And we recommend it. In my in-person classes. And that's fantastic, Michelle. And you know what? Even better is this example also has a lot of uh, journals options. So just if you have those essay assignments, and I'm sure Michelle can speak to it a little bit more in depth, if you have them turning in essays, have it be something different. Let it be engaging. Let it be a blog. Let it be a journal. So you, they get a different writing perspective, and they kind of put to practice how to write in different, you know, first person or, or, or things of that nature. So uh, with that right. said, we're going to give it to Ariella. Hi. So what I've noticed when I've looked through some of your courses is that when you create a journal, you tend to use, you tend to create as an assignment first, but you guys actually have a separate item for journals and blogs that you can utilize instead. And they come with um, a variety of different options that aren't available if you just send it as, a, as, a, as an assignment. So I'm just going to go over um, different blogs and journals, how the process of creating them, and why they're useful, and yeah. So I'm going to start off with journals first. Um, and just to go into it a little bit, for people who aren't quite sure what they are, it's kind of a personal space where students and professors can communicate. And it allows students to reflect on their own thoughts, ideas, and opinions. And they can also analyze the different course materials and topics that you send out to them. So for creating a journal, you're just going to go down here to your course tools. Then you're going to scroll down. You're going to see the journal option right here. And you just, you're just going to select Create Journal. So I'm just going to call this Test Journal. And for the prompt or instruction, just to tell the world. And right here, you're going to see all of these different options that are available. So, for example, if you want to limit the availability, you can select what day you want them to display up until or um, when you want them to sort of end. You can have an option to index your journals, which kind of saves them and organizes each journal entry by, you can choose by um, each month or by on a weekly basis. And you can also give your users and students the ability to delete their own entries. So if they're not satisfied with something, they can just select the option to, okay, I'm going to erase this, I'm going to try this again. You can also give them an option to comment on other students' um, journals, which can promote um, discussions about different aspects. And then you can also, even though journals tend to be more private, you can set the option to have them viewed by the other students in the classes. And of course, you're going to see your regular grade, grading option down here. I'm just going to set it to 10 points. OK, so this is the how it appear in your course, this journal here. So for your student to create a different entry, they're just going to select Create Journal Entry. And then you're going to go through 
essentially the same process where they can name it, they can type in the content, or they can just upload a file that they created using Word or um, any other writing software. I'm just going to select. Yeah, and if you want to be a little bit technologically, you know, like advanced or have your students engage with technology a little differently, they could uh, upload a video of themselves. Yeah. So like every month, maybe a monthly journal check-in of how they feel about the content that you're teaching, how it makes them feel about interacting with the outside world, you know, all that sort of relevancy um, with your su subjects. I know you, you all can hit regardless of the topics you teach. So um, just something to consider that doesn't have to be written. Yes. Yeah. Uh, first grader's question. When we create this journal, does it automatic? if I have 15 students in the class, does it automatically create 15 of them? In other words, does each of the students then have his or her own journal once I created this? So uh, that's a great question. Actually, what the students will have to do is there's a, there's a forum where the journals are located. They would still have to click on it, it similar to a discussion board. So it's, it's like a discussion board. They have to go create their own journal. They, every stu all 15 students will have the ability to do, create their own journal, but they would still have to click on the, the journal assignment and then click on create journal in order to create that, that journal space for themselves. Right. They, they need to click to first find out what kind of journal I want. Right, yes. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then they click to create each their own journal, which is which is private to them un unless we decide to, that things are shared. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Right. Would I normally instruct them about that when I'm create by way of an announcement when I'm creating the journal? Here's what you have to do, have to do, or are they prompted t toward it? Even if they're prompted toward it, do I still? <laughs> I've taught often enough to me that to know that that doesn't mean more places that I don't for, have to explain yeah, it. Yeah, right? yeah. More places are probably best for as far as instructions. But to answer directly your question, if you put the instructions to your journal, um, where where she had, uh, uh, you know, when, you during the process, right, you can do it right in the journal when you're creating. Yes. When so when they yeah. when we okay. click on the journal, they'll see all the parameters of what the instructions are, yeah. and then they can click on create journal. So okay. Everyone will have access to that. Thanks. But also, I think um, it's helpful to know also that it's not just a journal where they can kind of, you need to create, right, different posts, like yeah. just like discussion board. Yeah. So, for example, I have like a first day writing assignment um, in my in-person class. Like, okay, we've gone over the syllabus, now tell me, you know, you know, what do you, you know, I asked them to talk about their writing experiences, what their expectations are for the course. So that's, that's one. So it's a discussion board, but it's private. Only they can see it, and I can see it. Um, you so do that's that in the, the journal space. Yes, or, okay. because I don't want anybody else. Or if, and then there's a self-reflective journal where they talk about their writing process, but nobody else can see that. Yeah, right. So it's almost like a discussion board, except it's just between the two of you. Okay. So you, if you want them to, to keep it, it's so not. That, it's but, not a running journal. Right, like, but then they have to be prompted to make the next. In other words, there's communication. Right, so I set them up as assignments, kind of like they have to kind of go in and, and do that. Journal assignment number one, two, yeah. three. Yeah. yeah, like I have, we have it for, for one God this semester, we have it set up under journals, blog one, blog two, blog three, and then it, they have to go in every week and do their blog. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because so the blogs on Blackboard are public. Yeah. So even though we call it a blog, it's really a journal because... Right, but journals are private. Yeah, that's why we do yeah. it, because journals yeah. are private. But blogs are public, right? Yeah, yeah. Blackboard right. blogs okay. are okay. public. Yeah. More, more like discussion boards, at least in that, that yeah. format. Right. But you have to set one up for each week. Each, okay. each week, and I would uh, or ask, whatever assignment. It, it, yeah. yeah, it depends. Also, if if it's one journal, if you just have one prompt, and it's the same prompt throughout the semester that you just want students to sort of uh, keep going on, you know, keep uh, registering, you might not need to create multiple journals, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But if it's a different subject that you want them to reflect okay. on, or sort of a different format, then that's where you have to create. And I think this course actually has that example if you want to. Yeah, show, the journal. Yeah, the different journal entries. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to. In other words, if you didn't want to specify, you could simply say for each module, comment on module one, comment on module two. I mean, not, but then if you're going to specify in the module, uh, either by module or yeah. even within the module, different mm -hmm. ones, you would, of course, want to, want to indicate that as you were through. Absolutely. Well, and for grading, too. Oh, like yeah, for us, it's easier to have them just block one, block two, because then you can just grade each. Yeah, I see what you mean. It just makes grading more convenient. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So you set up your blog as a journal? Yeah. You want it to be private? Yeah. Okay, so I'll just going into an example of a journal assignment in this course. 
here's one for module two. So you can see that you can view the prompt and then the different instructions. And from this point on, your students would be able to write submission by selecting this option so that they just type whatever they want. And then they'd be able to submit that. And they can also add any other commentary that they want to that as well. Yeah, um, yeah, but won't let you submit because we're a teaching assistant. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, yeah. if this were Smith, then you'd be able to see each entry for that particular assignment. I have a quick question with the journals. I use journals a lot in my in-person classes, and sometimes I don't want to look at attachments. And either when I tell students multiple times I don't want attachments, I'll get attachments. So is there a way to turn the attachments off? Yeah, that's a great question. Now let's go. Let's go ahead and create a journal. I'm yeah, pretty sure there is. I did create. Did. Oh, I have to link it to this. Oh, but you could just click on one of those journals and or edit journal. Oh, yeah, back go back, back and hit edit. Let's go a little slower here. There you go. So edit. Display of grades just to be as thorough as possible. I mean, it's not a huge problem, but it's enough that if there was a way to turn it off, that would be yeah. awesome. I, I hate saying. it when they attach it. Because yeah. I'm pretty sure. Because it automatically has the, the drag and drop, which I see you're saying. Because I know in the discussion boards, I think there's an option to not allow attachments. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's the avenue to go to. Maybe just utilizing the discussion boards as your journal forum. Um, but then, then it's not private. Yeah, it's not private. Yeah. No, it's but not then private. it's not private. So I just give them okay. a zero if they don't follow directions. <laughs> <laughs> no mercy. No mercy. I like it. Show no mercy. So <laughs> yeah, we apologize. I guess there's no. And that's something that I'm gonna. That's just an LMS situation. Yeah. Sometimes it's like pages and you can't open them. The The good thing is, is if the attachments are word files. They tend to, it, it, because of the box system that's incorporated in a Blackboard, you get the preview, you get to see the paper without actually having to download. But if an attachment's a video or something else, then you're probably, uh, yes? Okay, so I, I probably have to work, sorry, I don't want to take, I've had to work with you guys after, after this because the way my, the modules and they submit the assignments, it doesn't do that on my online course. It'll do that in my in-person course when they submit it in Grade Center, but I don't know if it's, you, so I don't know if it's the way the assignments are set up, but they'll submit the assignments and then I have to download. It doesn't It doesn't open where I can comment in Blackboard the way I can in my in-person class. Great. That's a, that's a great question. So I, I think with that is just how, what you click on to grade those assignments, right? So I'm pretty sure, so let's go to the Grade Center real quick. I'm going to go, I'm sorry, I'm going to this. Uh, full Grade Center. And this was a journal, correct? No, this is for an essay. So for a regular a written assignment. Correct. So is there an essay here? No. So first, so that's what we're looking for there. Well, what's this assignment? It's a similar journal. You know what? For all intents and purposes, we're going to pretend, yeah, they're all journals. That that this module two journal is a, is a, is an essay, okay. regular assignment. Do you, do, you, do you usually take this step? Do you go to the Grade Center, click on the drop-down menu of the uh, item, that essay, and then hit Grade Attempt? No, I just start with the first one and work my way down. Yeah, yeah, so to, I, I would suggest going ahead so you don't okay. have to, uh, you just start off with the assignment title, Grade okay. Attempt. Okay. Ah, that's great, there's actually for the... Okay, but it doesn't have to do that. Or it just shows the... See, so I, sometimes, it, it, it doesn't seem to be with all file types, but most of the time, at least if it's a Word file. I have that in my in-person class, but... It doesn't show up on your online course? No. Yeah, we'll have to look at it and, and check it out, and we'll, we'll see what, what it is. Maybe it's a, a system thing to add. And my drop-down menu doesn't give me the option to create attempts. Oh, okay, so maybe there's... It yeah. has quick columns, semi-view grade history... Um, no. Yeah, we're even have that. 
sounds like a problem with your permissions. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look into that okay. as soon as the session's done. So just keep that area open on your computer and okay. we'll, we'll check it out. Not to, we're, we're also going to talk about blogs. Yes. So the public so the space. Next, yeah, the next topic is um, blogs. And just like you guys said, the main difference between a journal and a blog is that blogs are intended to be shared with others. And that's kind of, that's one of their main um, usages is because they allow people to share knowledge with each other. And as a teacher, you're able to keep up on your students' activities. So that's why um, different professors enjoy utilizing them. So I'm just going to go and create a sample blog. I'm not going to walk you through the entire thing because the process, the process for creating a blog and creating a journal are the same thing basically. Um, so I just click course tools, blog, create blog. Yes. And for this example, I'm just going to show you how you're going to link your blog to your side of the page. Okay, so I have this test blog here. Now clicking on assignments, I'm just going to select tools, and then I'm just going to select blogs. And then you can see here that you can just link to it. Next and then it'll pop up for your students to see. And from this point on, they'll be able to create their own submissions underneath the blog. So yeah, so this is what the icon will look like. From here. So as you can see, this is how all of your students' blog entries will be displayed, just one um, under the other. And you can use this, um, for example, if you have a certain topic that you want your students to discuss, and you want to sort of, if you want them to see how each, how their peers see the same topic or the different viewpoints and opinions, um, then you can utilize this format. And you can also allow them to leave comments on each other's um, submissions as well. Okay, and then I'm just gonna... Yeah, and I, you know that's and I, I will definitely open it up for any specific questions that you might have. Some particular issues. We already had some great conversations about some um, some different elements and different issues uh, that you're encountering. But uh, we also want to leave give an opportunity for you to uh, ask any other additional questions or things we haven't covered that maybe we should cover in the future. Um, well, I have a question for a moment for the other people in the room because I. It, my course, I haven't used blog. I do use a discussion board, so I see what the student is doing, but not others. This is really not so much an online issue, but as a content issue. Um, being in the same room and commenting cre creates a certain civility that is often absent in America when people are on a screen. Have any people who use blogs in this room run into problems with the way students in that? That just doesn't happen. I mean, everybody recognizes that. I haven't used it, that's why I, I'm asking. I've never had any issues. You never had any issues? Well, that's good to know, actually. Yeah. And because, I mean, because they're visible to everyone, and then they tend to be based on, when, when I use them, it's to develop, it's a pre-class kind of, right, pre-discussion. So whatever they're putting on there is what we're going to actually, actually then okay. discuss in Just, class. Yeah. So it tends to stay pretty much on. Good. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. Great question. Great question. And you know, we are, you know, in our role for online education, you know, we're our advocates for technology and all that jazz. But ultimately, I, I think within all our experiences, what makes or break a great online class experience is, is your presence. Uh, how comfortable you are posting those announcements, a grading in a timely fashion, uh, it, it, re reaching out to students, maybe uh, writing comments on blogs or your discussion posts showing students that you're reading what they're posting. These are, this is the low tech element to online learning that is probably the most important, right? Because they're there to learn from you, to hear from you, um, to, to kind of for you to share those ideas. So I know sometimes in some of these sessions that we're gonna be teaching, we're gonna be advocating for new technology, different VR, AR, all that cool stuff. But ultimately that stuff is, is minimal 
if, if you're not uh, engaging with your students, uh, either writing to them or, or posting videos, things of that nature. So uh, I do want to advocate for that. Yes? Do you have, um, because you do have templates of, of your syllabi, um, it, and, and I don't, sorry if you do, but is there a statement on civility? I've seen a lot of syllabi that mm -hmm. have like a civility statement that, that, well, that would maybe, be helpful. that ne could be part of. Absolutely, netiquette, uh, and we actually have a blurb within our website. If you want to go to, <coughs> yeah, what is it, dci.dli? No, it's uh, dli.dci.miami.edu. It's okay. what? DLI. DLI. Oh, DCI. I think we have a blurb somewhere, so let's look at faculty. Maybe responsibilities? Maybe for students, just students. Resources? Current students. Be open minded. So we've oh, got yeah, some. Oh. Yeah, go back. You know, this is some tips for them that you can share with them, but I want to see is there also. No, there's no netiquette. Let's go back into the course because this might be also in our orientation. Yeah, group. it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, we actually got the, these guidelines here already built in. So if you're te teaching, yeah, if you're teaching a VGS course, it's probably in the online orientation. So this is a blurb that you can copy, and then you can copy this and post an announcement just to remind students um, to be respectful. Right, but these are more these are more like what to do civility like a general civility statement like we will be civil you know respect oh like a sort of like a pro like a like a like a like statement. An, like, an, like we have the honor code statement like there's mm -hmm. a civility I don't have one but I've seen some I don't know if maybe there was one I think there's some verbiage in the new like in the sample syllabi that you posted is there okay. there was some okay. sample syllabi that for a while was before I put my non syllabus on there it was. I know I took it down, that's why I don't Yeah, so, but there was something in there. That's why the template. We'll look into it to see if we can uh, find it so we remind ourselves that we have that, that verbiage. Um, and there is an opportunity if you want to have that statement on the, your main module page and have them review it, you can do that. And you can actually, if, if you want, and we can you know, show you at, at a different time uh, how to force them to review that statement before they see any of the other content in the course. So there is that option if you want to really reinforce um, them being civil or them not plagiarizing, things of that nature, kind of all-encompass that, and you can create a statement of that, of that nature. This site, this is at DLI, this material right here. What's the, just go to. Yeah, it's, it's, it's dli.dcie.miami.edu. Okay, and then just basically use the drop downs, yes. right? Yeah, and there's yeah. a lot of different information that we have uh, okay. for use faculty, for the students and stuff. And, and again, a lot of this is also in the online orientation guide that we call oh. standard in the, yep. the PGS course. Fine, yeah, right. So that's it. I hope this was helpful. Again, I think there's right. no way for me to make you a power user in one hour, but this is going to be a series. No. We're going to do it together uh, throughout multiple semesters. Yeah. Oh, it's very but you bring up great stuff that you yeah. bring to the table. You know, we try to bring up what we see for you guys as users and you're out there with the students. You guys really bring some stuff that you know that talks our mind as well. Thank you.